Hey, how's it going? We are in the book of Proverbs. Today we're in chapter 8. We're going to ver read verses 22 through 36, and we're continuing uh, in one thought, which is, you know, 8 1. Does not wisdom call out? Does not understanding raise her voice? And then all these things that wisdom is saying, that understanding is speaking. And so we're still in that. Uh, so today, chapter 8 of Proverbs 22 through 36. The Lord brought me forth at the first of his works. Before his deeds of old, I was appointed from eternity, from the beginning, before the world began. When there were no oceans, I was given birth. When there were no springs abounding with water, before the mountains were settled in place, before the hills, I was given birth. Before he made the earth or its fields or any of the dust of the world, I was there when he set the heavens in place, when he marked out the horizon on the face of the deep, when he established the clouds above the fixed uh, I'm sorry, when he established the clouds above and fixed securely the fountains of the deep, when he gave the sea its boundaries so the waters would not overstep his command, and when he marked out the foundations of the earth. Then I was the craftsman at his side. I was filled with delight day after day, rejoicing always in his presence, rejoicing in his whole world and delighting in mankind. Now then, my sons, listen to me. Blessed are those who keep my ways. Listen to my instruction and be wise. Do not ignore it. Blessed is the man who listens to me, watching daily at my doors, waiting at my doorway. For whoever finds me finds life and receives favor from the Lord. But whoever fails to find me harms himself. All who hate me love death. So again, talking about wisdom and understanding. So there we go. Wisdom here, you know, it's got an eternal kind of transcendent quality, a primary value. Here, wisdom is at creation god was being wise in creation wisdom was there with god you know god created with wisdom you know with understanding obviously the creation of god is amazing and incredible and if you've studied the natural world in any way you see all these symbiotic relationships and all these incredible things going on um you know it's just amazing and that is the wisdom of God in creation. So wisdom has this value. God is full of wisdom and understanding, of course. And so wisdom is a godly virtue. It's something that, that we want to attain to as part of godliness. Um, so go ahead and get some wisdom, you know, uh, that's what it says there, 32 through 36, you know. Um, now then, my sons, listen to me. Blessed are those who keep my ways, the ways of wisdom. Listen to my instruction and be wise. Do not ignore it. Blessed is the man who listens to me, to wisdom, watching daily at my doors, waiting at my doorway. For whoever finds me finds life and receives favor from the Lord. But whoever fails to find me harms himself. All who hate me love death. So we don't want to be rejecting wisdom. We don't want to hate wisdom and understanding. We don't want to love death. Uh, what we want to do is grab hold of wisdom and understanding. It is godly and it is good. Wisdom and understanding. These are good things. And uh, this kind of reminds me of, you know, like if we're seeking wisdom, wisdom isn't just follow this rule. Here's the rule, follow it. You know, shut up, follow the rule. That's not wisdom and understanding. You know, there are rules and there are, you know, teachings, but these teachings all make sense. There's wisdom behind the teaching. It's not just arbitrary rules to see if our, uh, if we're willing to obey, if we're, if we're going to be loyal when we don't want to be. That's not what um, the rules of God are all about. The rules are there to help us out because God is smarter than us and he's trying to give us some benefits of his wisdom and knowledge and understanding. And uh, what I see in these passages 
is more of a transformational concept rather than a transactional concept. I see people having a transactional relationship with God. Okay, I do these things, you do good for me. I, um, you know, believe in you, you forgive my sins. You know, like, and there's kind of a transaction there. Like, okay, now I've done, I've done enough, right? I'm done now. This is more talking about, you know, just being transformed into a wise person who's going to see the world in a different way and who is then naturally going to behave differently because of that wisdom that is there. And that's what we want. We want to be transformed into someone who is wise, who has understanding and insight, a depth of insight, being able to see beyond the surface and have a deep understanding. That's, that's what we want. So let's pray that we can have wisdom that, you know, is something that transforms us into a, a deeper person, someone who understands, is able to navigate life better because we're people of wisdom. Not just following a bunch of rules, but knowing what's going on. You know, I believe that's what God has for us. So let's pray along those lines and try to seek that wisdom. So Heavenly Father, we want to be transformed. Not having a transactional relationship with you where we do certain things that we uh, think you've demanded of us and then we expect you to do things for us. But Lord, being transformed into people of wisdom, people of understanding, people with insight, and then being able to navigate this world as a wise person, as a person with a deep understanding, with significant insight, seeing past the surface of things, but being able to really navigate this life because we have a sense of what's going on. So Lord, we want to be transformed, not just have a transactional relationship with you, but we want you to be able to help us to be transformed into people who are wise and who have understanding and insight. So Lord, guide us in this so that we can be that type of person who can then navigate this life in the, in the right ways. So Lord, bless us and encourage us with this. In Jesus' name, amen.